Yeah, so a uh, quick recap, uh, just going through the sprint check-in um, and the work that has been ongoing past the, the sprint. Um, and uh, so if you saw, so I just got left off saying, if you saw or read about the Binance hack, you would have uh, most likely read exactly where the bug was in the IVL, um, which, we, which we patched and released as uh, 0.19.3, but in the next release, most likely in 0.20, um, we will include the removal of range proofs and absence proofs, and we integrated ICS 23 directly on the tree, um, which lended some performance improvements for ICS 23 proof generation. Um, and uh, continuation of that is uh, we're still working on some um, testing um, and refactoring various tests within the repo. Um, Samuel Textual is an active work scope um, led by Amari. And uh, if you a if you are a Cosmosm chain, um, then we also added into the uh, into the sprint, uh, separating out uh, static data from uh, from needing to vote in order to reduce the amount of gas needed to vote, um, and this will help with Cosmosm uh, Cosmosm gas consumption on votes as well. What is the static data? Um, stuff like uh, like all you all you technically need for the vote is like the the start time and the end time, but yet every read it's going it's reading like messages, content data, like oh. metadata, all all this extra data, and so it's basically. Um, I think the the goal is just to have only the data that's needed in a separate struct for the vote, and then it only reads that um, right. instead of like a larger read. All right, breaking down the object into smaller things. Yeah, N not necessarily breaking down the, the object. I think like we're going to keep the proposal uh, object. There's a, a, a PR by Facundo, and the proposal is like to keep the proposal um, object so it's not state breaking and just introduce a new struct. Um, and that way, um, and that way, it doesn't. Um, it's not state breaking. Oh. Now I realize you. Now I realize my internet went out. Someone is raising hands. Okay. Um, awesome. Uh, okay, so I just, I just. Uh, try. Um, yes, Manev. Yeah. Uh, hi. So I'm from Celestia. Uh, we're adding um, deep, I deep sub trees for IABL currently. Uh, so since you mentioned we removed uh, or like range groups have been removed, right? So we were thinking of uh, extending the ICS23 uh, spec to support these deep IAVL subtrees. Um, so these will be used in uh, fraud proofs in the Cosmos SDK. So I'm implementing uh, fraud proofs in the Cosmos SDK, state, state fraud proofs. Uh, so that's why we need these deep subtrees. So what uh, should we expect? Should we like hold on uh, and wait for the new IABL release that you mentioned with performance improvements, or uh, what kind of things should we look out for when uh, by implementing this? I think, I, I think for you guys, just working off the latest main branch is fine i think tomas actually already has a pr that uh, a branch that works off deep subtrees off of ics23 um yeah yeah that's so. that's one by now uh, so should we is it okay to continue and keep extending ics23 uh just like we just want to make sure that there's no substantial uh changes to the iavl spec that we should uh and in terms of proof, in terms of proof support, um, what support. is in I, IVL ICS twenty three will be the, like the proof handling. So, um, like right now, there is no um, no plan to modify ICS twenty three. Um, so, you should be fine there. There are changes slated that are being worked on in IVL, but that wow. shouldn't that shouldn't um, another quick uh, question. Just, is um, should we we were we want to extract the contents of that proof the ICS twenty three proof? There's a path to leaf object that is included in the ICS twenty three proof. We want to extract that out 
uh, after from fraud proof. So, but that functionality isn't really there right now. Uh, so, is that uh, are there any like security issues to uh, be able? To could you could could you make an issue on? On ICS, so we're going to move we're going to move Confio ICS twenty three to the Cosmos org, and then um, you should be able to make an issue in any repos, and then someone should be able to answer your question. Sounds good. Thank you so much. I, I think uh, uh, it's already moved to IC, uh, Cosmos SDK, the ICS twenty three uh, module. Um, yeah, it, it, right now it's within um, within the SDK, the Go arm of it. But there's still like the Rust arm and the JavaScript arm um, that will be ported, that will be moved, transferred from Confio to Cosmos. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. And uh, we're also modifying the Cosmos, or we want, in order to add fraud proofs, we, we uh, need to add some uh, methods to the IABL store. Uh, so, what so so we would like I, I think opening an issue like is gonna be the best answer opening I can issue. give you right okay. now. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll uh do that. Thanks so much. So, um yeah, I IVL's kind of uh we're working on it. Um it's opening an issue and uh we'll definitely get someone to answer it. Um and yeah, that kind of also leads into the second part. Um there's work being done in the IVL repo. So there's two proposals. Um, and one is to modify the key format into a sequential integer ID. And the other proposal is uh, to modify the key format into write version and node path and tree. And so um, Cat Shark from Notional and John from the SDK region team are working on, on two proposals on the two proposals, and they will um, provide benchmarks and updating and various things for testing. And so we can just kind of see how it works and if it works better. Um, and that's that's the current sprint. Any questions on that? Perfect, now. Thank you. The last part will require like the whole migration, yes? Yeah, and so we, we plan to, um, so this is like experimentation right now. Um, and testing, and uh, next week we're gonna start kicking off like uh, migration designs and like how to um, how to best handle migrations of historic storage, of current storage, um, and stuff like this. Would be good to um, maybe like also at least maybe one point zero. Yeah, ho hopefully. I mean, I, uh, on IVL, I'm fine to hit one point zero. To be honest, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, any any questions on the current sprint? Um, okay. Air goes, air, air goes, um, raise his hand. Oh, maybe, maybe not anymore. Um, sweet, then. Uh, we have Twilight check-in. Um, well, I have to share my screen again. So Twilight is the name of the release for uh, 047. Um, um, and right now, the two things that are like the biggest blockers are the base F++ integration. So this is phase one. Um, so uh, ADR is implemented. Uh, Sean Carlo is working on implementing uh, the integrating the prepare and process proposal, while Matt is uh, working on the app side mempool. Um, and so those two PRs are already open. And uh, the next thing after that is the liquid staking work um, from inclusion. Um, we have a PR with it upstreamed. Uh, okay, it's somewhere here. Um, with it upstreamed, and uh, and then now I, I'm working on testing. And so once we get those two things merged, we'll be ready to start working on the um, alpha beta testing. On top of that, um, Amari has been talking with the JavaScript team 
um, not JavaScript team, they've been talking with Simon and Dan Lynch from Cosmology on adding amino JSON proto annotations. Um, so uh, we can, um, you can get the uh, amino message from the proto file instead of the other, um, instead of the uh, current way where it's registered. Um, and so he's been working, has an open PR. Um, if you're working in JavaScript or in a different language, I would love to um, have you review it so you can find it. Yeah. I'll post it in the uh, post it in the chat here. But yeah, if you're working or have a team with a different language, would love to um, have your eyes on this and see if it's beneficial to you and um, what else would be needed from your side to if, if this is sufficient for the use case that is trying to fulfill. Um, so those are the three work scopes left for Twilight. Um, and we're uh, getting closer. We we did lose uh, a week due to the security incident last week with Dragonberry. Um, and it consumed most of the time the team had last week. And so um, we chose to uh, be extra cautious and just uh, not have everyone forced into a release and just work on getting everything sufficiently into um, production readiness. We still plan on doing the test net. Um, and then we we're still aiming for, I think it was like uh, alpha or RC by the middle of October. And I think um, we're aiming for alpha RC by the end of October. Um, and then we'll be able to move towards the final release of Twilight. Any questions there? Uh, why interchange security is part of the, okay, it's done already, right? Oh, um, it's just, uh, they had some changes that they needed in the SDK um, and they were working off a branch. And so we just upstream those changes to main. Um, and there, there was like very small changes. It was like um, an extra field on a function and uh, an extra, it was like it was like very few modifications that didn't alter state, and so um, we we added it to main so we could include it in the release. But the actual interchain security part, like the consumer and pr producer chain uh, code, is in a different repository. Okay, uh, as a question about um, liquid staking, uh, what was the decision of including it in the core? What was the motivation of including it in the core? Um, there were three users that expressed interest in using it. Um, and so we opted to include it into core. It is optional still, so it's not mandatory. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, okay. Awesome. Any other questions? Uh, yes. About the uh, about base, base, uh uh base app plus plus i i have a question about the process proposal would we have process proposal uh, so that we can process the proposal before we start the consensus phase the, the consensus phase uh which will which would help uh, solve the refining fee problem yeah, so wait, um, so what problem did you say it fixes? Refunding fees. Uh, yeah, refunding fees, yeah. Yeah, so um, in the first implementation um, that will be released in 047, this, uh, that won't be part of it because we're trying to do like a scoped release and not trying to increase scope. We can do a quick 048 um, if, we, if we land that. But the, that, there's like two approaches being discussed for fee handling here. Um, Bez, uh, Bez commented on, on an issue or presented an issue um, that basically talked about how we can refund gas through executing um, during process proposal. Um, so, uh, so ideally, it's like once we release Twilight, then we would start with that work on top. I mean, is okay. it like a, a glutonic half of the unburnt? And burn gas. 
Excuse me? Is it like returning half of the unburned, as a half unused, of yeah. unused fees? Yeah, so basically like right now, we don't, we don't, we can't really refund uh, refund gas in a non dossable way, from my understanding. And um, using process proposal would be able to refund gas in a um, non dossable way. Um, I think there's like two trade offs here, and it's really dependent on the application developer because there's the approach of um, stopping consensus and doing uh, doing execution um, like in cash. Um, of these of these transactions, which kind of which slows down consensus, or there's like the optimistic way optimistic way where it's like you start executing um, during process proposal and you finish when commit comes. Um, there's like trade offs to both, um, and I think uh, ideally, like in my head, I'd love to make it optional to the application developer. So if they want to like slow down consensus in the pre on the process proposal phase, then they should be allowed. But if they don't want to slow down consensus during the process proposal phase, like teams like Sai and Defund and um, Edmos may not want to, then um, they can have the option to like do some form of like optimistic execution. But I think there's still an ADR that needs to be written for this. Oh, sorry. I was like thinking about the simpler solution we were discussing um, two months ago, I guess, like basically returning half of the and use fees. So you still charge everything at the beginning and then return half of it. Um, I wasn't part of that discussion, I believe, or if it's an, an issue. It's um, an issue. Maybe uh, maybe if someone who's part of that conversation can speak up. Uh, I think Beth and Beth, not really depend on the things here. Yeah, I think uh, returning half of the gas uh, half of the leftover gas is okay, but uh, it's not perfect. So the most perfect way is just uh, we know how much gas will be used instead of how much gas is wanted. If we know how much gas is used, used uh, when we propose the block, uh, we could safely refund the leftovers. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, that's I it. I think that, that's what, um, yeah. I think Bez wrote that in an issue as well. Um, so like so, the, the, the solution, I was like drafting for Umi. I wanted to add it like to the next release. Uh, I didn't finish it, but if anyone wants, I can make a pull request as like an optional mechanism. I mean, basically, uh, like a new version of uh, anti handler uh, and po post it to the SDK. So basically, like you can basically choose like which anti handler you want to use, like the default one, which is consuming everything, or or the one. Do, do, do you maybe want to um, open an issue of some sort with that Excuse information? Me. Let me find um, out. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Find it. And then, yeah, I don't. I don't want you and. Um, Maybe Bez or Aaron or Emery can chime in um, on the issue, and then we can have a have a decision. But I also think it's if you guys have it in your anti handler, then um, I think we can document that this is like an alternative option for anti handlers as well. Okay, I will find it and. Uh... Touch gas went to the um. Also, Robert, like I, I want to add on 046, we also added a post handler, um, which mm -hmm. is like the anti handler, but it runs after message execution. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, and maybe like, you know, gas refund, if ever that could be useful, well, can be also happen, can also happen there. Um, yeah, yes, that, that, that's how I was implementing it in a week. Okay. Um, okay, I found it. Um, adding it to the uh, meeting notes, the issue. So this is like the issue, then we close it because there was like an old issue which basically was playing the same thing. Uh, so go to the meeting notes. Uh, you can also like post it here. I mean, this issue was closed because there is there was previous issue which basically was outlining similar thing. Uh, yeah, that one. Okay, yeah. 
Um, yeah, we, we can reread this and see. Um, yeah, I, I do think that uh, yeah, team teams we can document that like your anti handler exists as an alternative, um, and then teams can use it as well. Um, the the idea with like including it in the SDK um, kind of unloads the maintenance burden onto the SDK team, and we're trying to like reduce overall maintenance and reduce code in the repo in the repository right now. Okay, so I mean, so let me know if you know it's interest or not. I can like, contribute it. Yeah, sounds good. Um, sweet. So, who will um, let me know? <laughs> we we can follow up. Uh, so, I mean, uh, we can have the conversation in Discord too. Okay. Uh, um, next, we have ADR thirty eight. Um, so, the one sec. Um, so I think like part, uh, Aaron is here and I think Matt's here as well, but, um, part, part of the question here that, uh, some people on the team had was, uh, why use something like hash pro go plugins instead of just using like a gRPC stream. Um, and I think like Peter somewhat answered it, but, uh, maybe, um, I, I'm, I keep butchering your name, but Egal's, um, is it Egal's? Aaron Gals. Yep. There it goes. Um, yeah, maybe maybe you can kind of like touch on on um, why why you opted for HashiCorp Go plugins instead of a um, gRPC stream. Yeah, so the previous version of the plugin system was using the underlying Go's plugin API, which is problematic. And since we also wanted to stick with the plugin system. Uh, for the ADR, um, as is my understanding, to make it easier and pluggable, uh, I came across the HashiCorp Go plugin. Uh, if, if you guys have had a chance to look at the documentation for the HashiCorp, especially on the Go side implementation, it makes it very simple to uh, to implement. We also gain um, gRPC with it as well. So that was a definite plus there too. Um, so we gained um, uh, a plugin system and we got gRPC over it. Um, but that was basically the main reason for it. Aaron or Matt, do you guys have, um, yeah, processor? I think it's also um, Aaron or Matt, do you guys have questions in relation to that? I mean, the main thing. Does that include, do you have like any issue or anything, uh, and the link that I can include in the notes? Yeah, I, I can grab it for you. Go on, Aaron. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, the, so one one question that you know comes to my mind um, with any kind of solution where we're trying to stream these updates over an RPC is, um, yeah, how do you how do you deal with connection failures to your um, listening process? And so, you know, I, I guess if we were to go, you know, with the straight gRPC streaming service, um, you know, we'd be sticking with more the way we do things in SDK already, but you wouldn't really be able to deal with like the um, the listener being offline. And so I guess I'm just wondering, does this plugin system make sure that, um, you know, you're, you have your plugin listener that that listener doesn't lose any uh, rights? I, I think that's our primary goal here from, from provenance's perspective. Um, the thing that we need is we need every piece of state to be reliably synced to an external system through this which is been actually quite a complicating factor for this whole process as it's been dragging on for, for quite some time. And so um, this, this model that, that Ergos is talking about here, if there's a fault on writing um, the data to the remote uh, system, then the error would, would stop that node. And, and while that's not ideal for for many applications for a node, it's good for a node that its sole purpose is to relay that state to an external system. All right, well, that makes sense. And I think that you know justifies better the introduction of the Go plugin system. I, I would like to understand better why um, the existing implementation, like why that wasn't sort of workable for your use case. 
the the previous plugin system? Yeah, we're just like you know yeah. what we have now is you can implement um, it's like I think it's called the streaming listener and like an ABCI listener and like you know why couldn't you just build something into your binary that just uses those and and why does it need to go into a separate process? That's what I'm trying to understand better. So I, mean, I, I think sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's still using the the streaming listener and the VACI listener interfaces. Um, what we gained from the, I guess the previous plugin system, as I mentioned earlier, was used as Go's API plugin system, which you need to pre-compile and uh, you need to update your plugins every time you have a, a Go version change, right? That was my that's my understanding of it. Uh, which I think um, I don't know if it was you, Marco, which says that that's not ex that we we don't want to play around with that at all. Um, so that's how I came across the HashiCorp plugin system. What we gained from that, even though it's gRPC, it, it um, the plugin system is the one that loads your plugins in its own process and maintains it, uh, and it, it does the communication over RPC. Uh, so it's running on local host. Your plugins are running on local host next to your node. So I guess like basically what it sounds like what you're trying to say is like you want some way of extending what the built-in functionality is without having to recompile a binary or you know even pre-compile some you know uh, shared libraries you want to just be able to have like you know some separate binary that you can build that's not you know loaded into the same process and and that's the way you want to be able to do extensibility exactly yeah because you can you can pre-compile plugins and then uh, the plugin system will load them and then you just go from there so basically we're just looking for is a, a simple pipe right just to, to stream the events across. Uh, without having to worry about um, updates to the SDK, right? Anytime the protos change or anything like that, the plugin shouldn't have to be concerned with uh, keeping up with uh, with the SDK updates. It should just be able to to grab the um, the transactions and then just put it to external systems, which is the goal of the ADR, right? Is to just store this information externally, whether it's a database or a um, Kafka or RabbitMQ. We just want to store that information and then um, to have downstream domains uh, just take the, those events and then do their work uh, without having to, for example, because I know there's been questions on the ticket itself right now that's going under review. I can probably answer that here is the goal is to, to have the plugin just store the events uh, externally on a database, for example, and then downstream domains can can continue on with our work. Um, and I know right now in the design, I'm streaming them in, as raw bytes. And the question is, why am I not just using the um, the types, the, the the strict types events? Uh, that's one of the reasons, right? We don't want the plugin to have to worry about keeping up with the SDK updates because uh, that, that makes for a very, very bad user experience. Um, whether, whereas you're just, the plugin just takes the events, stores them in the database, downstream domains can process that information, and, that, and then downstream domains would be responsible for maintaining the proto updates and all that, which um, blockchain explorers already do that as we speak, right? They, they have to maintain the different versions of the proto bytes to be, make sure that they can explore every block. Uh, so that's not a concern. Um, and then the other one is that we don't create a bottleneck if, if, if for example, you have to, you're forced to update your plugin every time. Well, no, I wouldn't say necessarily every time the SDK makes an update, but if there's a proto update on the SDK side that forces you to update your plugins, uh, you become a bottleneck for your downstream domains, which you could end up with issues there. So um, this is one of the reasons I just, well, if, if you look at the ADR, I'm just going for a simple pipe um, that we can just stream the the byte um, uh, bright representation of the messages versus using the strict typed events, uh, which I think is one of the questions that Peter asked as well on the ADR on the proposal. Yeah, that definitely makes sense to me. Um... Yeah, sorry, that was a little bit of a long answer. So if anybody's got questions there, I'm happy to answer them. So I think the, the answer to the question, like why use a plugin system at all, is um, oh yeah, so, it's easier for well, it is easier, and uh, we also what we gain with the gRPC, right? You, you're language agnostic, so sure. Um, well, well, gRPC and plugins are completely separate. I mean, we we could have gRPC well, without plugins. 
True. Well, yeah. I, I, I think you're, I think we're talking about like two different forms of plugins. I think it's like, um, the system we had before was like go plugins and it was like, you have to build it into the binary. You have to like recompile the binary with it. Um, the new approach is like HashiCorp plugins, but it's not like Go plugins. Um, but Correct. it's, it's then, called, it's, it's like HashiCorp plugins is just the name. Yeah, when I say plugin, I just kind of mean like conceptually a plugin. In this case, like there's a host system and it's running a, some, it's, it's starting something up inside of its environment and that's the plugin, however we implement it. I, th I think like the question that we had was like, okay, now we see we're using gRPC with HashiCore. Why not? Is would gRPC just be enough on its own? Or, but I think I think you're saying that you want the plugin system because it kind of makes it easier for your operation. Yeah, I mean, the problem with just gRPC on its own is that you you can't. Um, you know, how do you deal with the failure of the of the listener to to be live? And then you're just going to miss. You know, you're going to have corrupted state then because you're going to miss writes. Yes, and, and the the other thing with the plugin with the HashiCorp plugin system is most of the work is done for you, uh, especially when it comes to to the con maintaining the connections, and uh, um, it also provides multiplexing underneath that's built in. Depending on how we decide to to um, evolve the the API later down the road, uh, because there is a way. To, for example, when a plugin is loaded, if it does um, throw an error. It, you necessarily do not have to uh, stop the host system, right? You can just ignore the plugin because you can load multiple plugins, so it won't affect the entire system as a whole. And then that's what you gain from the plugin as well. Although at the moment, um, I, I think we're only just going for the one plugin for the ADR 038, but it doesn't necessarily down the road. You can also expose different parts of the system as well. And it just makes that very easy to do. Uh, I have some experience with the plugin that you refer to. It's usually used to do some ETL work, so it's it, it can be considered to be part of the off-chain uh, off data perse processing. So the, consist the consist uh, consistency is not very important for such uses, use cases. Yeah. Which, Mostly, 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 this data is just uh, extracted and uh, stored into a a, a, a relational, relational database and do some analysis. Awesome. Was there, uh, I may have missed it. Was there, did you have a question or was it more of a statement? I think there's a, 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 a do. I'm sorry, am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, I do. Yeah. 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 Was that a statement or a question? I mean, um, yeah, uh, Aaron asked about uh, how does this plugin process with the uh, failures, but uh, I, I mean, uh, these plugins are mostly responsible for some off-chain use cases like uh, ETL. So maybe uh, the consistency is not very important in these use cases. Yeah. It's, is part of the off-chain ETL, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think it's like kind of hard to um, say like who needs consistency and who doesn't. I think like going with the idea of like everyone needs consistency, and then like if people are fine with like missing stuff, then um, they can like opt to like build a system like that. But I think um, at least for like SDK's use case, I think it's important to like build with consistency. And I think like Ira and the Providence crew already mentioned that they need like strong consistency. Yeah, so um, the, the error, we do support both. There's uh, a, a consistency mode and a fire forget, right? If you don't care about consistency. Yeah. Um, sweet. Uh, does anyone have any questions? I mean, Matt, as Aaron, um, 
it was everything sufficiently answered or are there more questions? With regards to plugins versus gRPC or the ADR in general? Uh, the, the, I think the, the plugin gRPC thing is kind of like, uh, was answered. Um, but I guess like to the, if you have more to that or the ADR in general. Yeah, I still don't understand the ADR personally. I think it needs well, to be revised. What don't you understand from it? I mean, I left numerous comments on it that were never, never addressed or answered. Um, and I also brought it up in, I think it was more, I think it was a, uh, internal SDK call. Um, but it's not, again, it's not clear to me if the changes are additive versus, um, modifying the existing, uh, design and ADR doesn't really clearly reflect that. Okay, so um, yeah, maybe we, we can work yes. on a. Uh, Does that make sense? Revive. Or I mean, how do, how do other people feel? I I've been following like, like ADR thirty eight for a while, so I'm kind of like more in depth so with that. With, when you read the ADR PR, um, it's not clear if the changes that are described in the ADR are describing a an addition to the current design or is it replacing the uh, current design in order to facilitate new features? That's what I'm saying isn't clear because when I like the plugin it, system I, was never was never merged. Like I'm there was just, there isn't a plugin system right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm just referring to the ADR PR. So I I reviewed it numerous times and it's I I'm having trouble wrapping my head around it because I'm I'm reading it in the frame of an extension of the current design, and when I do that, it doesn't make any sense to me. But if it's a replacement of the current design, then it's a little bit more clear to me. But it, from the ADR, that's not clear. So that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. Here goes. Uh, would, would you? It seems to be a replacement, if I'm not mistaken. We're, we're replacing the Go plugin system. Yeah. So, so neither neither plugin systems were ever merged. Um, they were just uh, recommended. I don't know yes, what so you mean by plugin systems. I'm I'm referring to like the actual the actual ADR type, the actual ADR. Yeah. Um. So I, I guess it, in a way, the the latest one with the plugin system would be an addition to the original ADR. Basically, are we just saying we need to update the text to the ADR? Uh, yeah, that we're looking at. There's a section in the ADR for the plugin for plugins. Which kind of talks about it. Um, I think we're just maybe pivoted on the implementation a little. So probably needs to be updated. Okay. Uh, I agree that I agree that the interfaces and object model are kind of confusing, though. It's um, like, just super confusing to me. Yeah, I think all the points you raised are, are valid, and it'd be best if we could address those in the PR. Like I, I tried to write. Like I, I literally sat, I sat down, and I literally, I drew out all the types, um, and their dependencies and how they talk to each other, what depends on what, and I, I was just, I couldn't follow along. But that, I mean, again, that's just my um, interpretation of the ADR. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Are, are you are you reading it from like the the, the PR? Or are you reading like the the concrete ADR, like the the, the, the one whole, that's already in main? I I read, I read the ADR PR as a file, so not the diff, but I read it as a whole file. Okay. With uh, with, with 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 the diff in mind. You know, like I had a diff side by side, and I looked at the PR, I looked at ADR in in in, in whole, and I just yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe maybe uh, others think it, it makes sense and it's the right approach. You know, these are just my 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 no, two cents. I can take another another look at it, but are you looking at the at the latest proposal or the original one that's in on the main branch? The latest proposal. So we're the talking latest. about the yeah, ADR 38 PR. Did the, did the original ADR like make sense to you? Uh, 
Yeah, so when I read it without the diff, yes, it does. Okay. Okay. What I'm saying is in the context of the proposed changes, there's all these new types and there's things that seem to be doing similar things that are named similar ways and are somewhat dependent on each other and some of them aren't and it's, it's confusing to me. So, so I mean, does it make sense to you, Marto? Like when you read the... I mean, for, for me, I, I know like the the end state. Okay. And like, um, for me, it's like more more focused on the end state with like the current. I know there's like the state listener, and the, there's the ABCI listener, um, and so it might be that like just more clearing, um, uh, the, it just means it could just be like more clearing on like why these two separate types exist is what you're asking in the implementation in the additive case, right? I suppose, yeah. I don't. I don't know. Okay, that, I, I think that makes sense. Um, we we can work with uh, Aragons on that, um, just to make sure everything is like clear. Okay. Um. So we have ten minutes left. Um. I think uh, this is worth diving into. The, the storage roadmap um, and kind of just ha facilitate, facilitating a 10 minute discussion there um, and what we have ent entailed. So kind of like starting from the ground up um, within storage, uh, there's a huge lack of understanding of what the current storage is doing, um, the, the current store uh, package. And so what we're doing is we're working with informal um, to audit and spec out the current store package. And once we have a better understanding of that, then um, we plan on um, modifying and um, potentially even replacing um, parts of the current store API and kind of cleaning it up. Um, Bez open a discussion to facilitate uh, discussions around the storage refactor about various designs, various trees, um, historical, non-historical data. I think it's... Um, uh, and I, it's like using it as a starting point. And I think for the next quarter, we're at least planning to, the goal is to get in, get the audit spec and um, have the, the team on board into the store package and get a better understanding of how everything's being wrapped and unwrapped and cached. And also part of the storage uh, roadmap is we're also including the work from John on the IVL, um, John and Catchark from Notional um, on key format changes. Um, to take advantage of that locality and potentially other improvements on the IBL tree itself. Um, Bez, do you have more to add? Yeah, I think um, I think Pete, so in that discussion I created, I think Peter brings up an interesting point um, mm -hmm. about um, essentially the argument he was making is um, well, so he claims that he spent a lot of time um, looking into the store layer and working with it. And his argument is that IVL itself actually, you know, apart from the key formatting, is is itself not actually that uh, terribly uh, not performant. And it's all the abstractions that are built on top of uh, the AVL tree uh, that, that exists in the um, uh, store package, right? And he's saying all those abstractions and the way that it's managed uh, is what introduces the, you know, really severe inefficiencies when it comes to query and state management. And so I think there's something to be said about, you know, and this, this may seem a little drastic, but I think there is something to be said about like, can we take a giant step back and just evaluate the store package uh, in a much simpler perspective where it's literally just the IAVL store and a root multi-store. And we just kind of like remove all the silly caching um, and all the silly abstractions and just keep like the bare minimum and see how it performs. Uh, I think there is something to be said about that, about that approach. Um, although it's still, I think, really early to you know to to take that approach, but it you know I think it is something to be aware of. Yeah, I, I think like it's worth experimenting with it. Um, like um, like the like when I when I did a bunch of profiling on Osmosis at most Juno Hub. Um, 
the the thing that kind of like overpowered all the profiles was um IVL traversal and IVL uh, um and IVL traversal and um rebalancing is what really overpowered um the profile second to database compaction. Now when There's we use something like Pebble, um, the compaction went way down and other stuff started to show in the in the profile, but still IVL like traversal and uh, rebalancing was still the, like a great deal of it. Um, so that's that is kind of at uh, at odds with what Peter's saying, right? I, I, I think so it's like um I think it's he is right in terms of like Yes, we have so many random wrappings, and this is this is something that uh, Bear Chain brought up. This is something that I think even Crypto.com brought up. I think even they opened an issue about how many like cash wrappings and unwrappings there are, um, and how they they've seen it in benchmarks um, be effect on affecting Ethermint. Um, so there there is a lot of validity in what he's saying, and I think there it's just kind of like we should do more profiling, and um, this is part of like the the metrics endeavor that uh, we're starting on the SDK in order to like gather more metrics, more profiles in order to actually get more insight into like what's going on inside the store package and the overall node. Um, but uh, I, I can share, I think I still, uh, I think I tore down that endpoint that was like collecting profiles. But um, mm -hmm. with level DB, it's like all compaction, it's like, 30% compaction, 20% traversal and rebalancing, and then like minute other stuff. And then when you switch to Pebble DB, um, then the compaction is significantly lower, but state growth is um, an order of magnitude or two larger. Um, then you start seeing like other stuff. That's where we kind of saw more stuff from the store package. The anti handlers came out um, in the profile then. Um, and like the flame graphs, um, but I think it's like we just need more data on mm -hmm. on this. Um, but if if you want to like experiment and like quickly knock out like what would it look like um, with just the IVL store, the root multi store, and no caches, like mm -hmm. I'm happy to spin up a node with that uh, with that as well. We need one of the things I was mm -hmm. sorry. One of the things I was suggesting like to to try is like um, you know. Ripping out the cache store and considering that uh, transient design that's um, in the closure version of the uh, AVL of an AVL tree, so that you're basically mutating something in place and you're not doing it. Maybe you do less rebalancing until the final step. I'm not really sure, but um, so one thing I was going to one thing I was going to say is um, we we need like I think one of the first steps is getting some state export. You know that's not that is like somewhat of a real world uh, representation, but not too crazy uh, large that we can kind of insert into benchmarks and run. Because otherwise, you know, if we make changes and improvements and refactor, refactor certain stores uh, or even like rip out layers of abstraction, we have no baseline. We have like no compare, like way to compare results, right? And uh, to see if we're going in the right direction or not. I think one of the first steps that we should do is is get the ability to um, get some sort of data export from a test net or some other chain that's relatively realistic and then write a series of benchmarks that represent real world use cases like you know for example querying um, a validator's delegations you know that is notorious for being really slow um, do you mean like when you say state export do you mean like we want I mean, like a database to rerun the previous blocks through um, or what I would what I would want is the ability to uh, either be a uh, export or a data director or something where we can write a go benchmark test import it create like a create like a sim app or an app or a guy app or whatever app that we import or export from like like load the data you know like kind of run an import and then from that imported app run benchmark so like run staking delegation queries uh benchmark uh you know like bank uh queries and things like that so we have a baseline so yeah i guess either a data export or a, a genesis export yeah. <laughs> uh, probably Daniel's a genesis raising his export. Hand. Yeah. yeah yeah go ahead um so i i actually 
I did a bit of this um, a bit ago with some different da database backends, um, and uh, I like I just used the sim test kind of as a uh, um, uh, for for performance. Um, I don't know if that necessarily is what you were looking for, uh, but also we so we we publish uh, quick sync tarballs of our data directories every now and then. Uh, so that might be something you could grab. Yeah, I, I, the, the, um, yeah, um, I think a Genesis yeah, we, export would, would do just fine. I mean, Genesis export is like you're going to import it, and it's it's not like it's not actually telling of a real world network because your database is small, and we already know that um, we already know that as the data data increases on disk, queries get slower because of like oh, right, the, right, right. you're like randomly searching, you're like doing traversal of IVL. But you're also randomly searching disk because you're not using data locality. So we already know that, like, using data locality, um, uh, using data locality will increase performance on larger disk sizes, um, and that's like something that like John's doing, um, and exactly what. Uh, so kind of like what uh, Anmol uh, Anma said about having stress tests with profile embedded binary and running it against multi-node setup. Um, this is the idea. So we're actually working with. Um, with the Rigitech team, um, they're building two tools right now. So one of the tools is a load testing tool that ideally is designed that people can, uh, it's a generalized load testing tool that people can inject their own transaction types that they can run against their own chains. And secondly, a, um, a like, kind of chain hold debug tool, um, basically give it two data directories and see where the app hash occurred. Um, and on the former tool, the idea is when we spin up um, test nets, we're able to um, do load testing with profiles so we can see in which direction to go. Um, and I think that, that this storage work will very much so um, benefit from that. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't know who wants to take on this work. I don't think it's going to be, it should be fairly trivial. Uh, we just need to write some benchmarks. I mean, yeah, if, if, you, if you write the benchmarks, I can get you nodes with various sizing data directories and you can kind of yeah like i can get you like the archive i have a couple archive nodes i can get you like um like kind of like would, a three a three terabyte disk a like a data like a 200 gigabytes and like a 20 gigabyte disk and then you can run the benchmarks across all three and see the difference i would say an archive node is probably best yeah because i kind of get this just, worst case worst case performance uh, is the code available for like the scenarios that you are, uh, you just described? Or? Uh, we uh, we we're just talking. About, uh, I think Buzz, we would need to write it. Oh, okay, okay. If this is in discussion right now or in design phase. Yeah, yeah. Um, just kind of generalize. We need a baseline. Is basically what we're saying. Yeah, uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and that's that, what we're saying. Uh, yeah. How, how to get the baseline is like, and we need this tooling for the baseline. So. Um, yeah, maybe Bez, if you want to like open a generalized issue, um, mm -hmm. uh, okay. maybe on a you can also leave some comments and, and if anyone else has design, uh, is considerations. Is on this call? I would love to see if Facundo would be interested in this. I don't think he is. Okay. I'll talk anyways. to him. Yeah. I don't see him. Okay. I'll talk to you about left. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, okay. Sweet. Right. Uh, so we, di we didn't get around to the ORM demo. Um, so we'll save that for next week. But uh, or or maybe once we actually figure out how to put these up on YouTube, um, then we can even do a uh, record part of uh, a session of a walkthrough using ORM. Um, and then just post it on YouTube and people can comment on what they think um, if, if we already have too many things for next week or for two weeks from now. But uh, yeah, I can Robert. comment related to the storage. So as far as I remember, um, the Vulcanize team, when they were like uh, trying to re-implement, so one of the goals for them was really to like trying to simplify and only use what's needed. So they really started from um, like, like a, let's say, a blank card and trying to go with like this this tree design, whatever, like you know, new stores has to be like 
um, attached. There was like a whole discussion with all, all PRs. Like we really, we really wanted to like avoid all this registration and, and see like the minimum interface. And over a time, they were basically adding and adding because um, they couldn't find like a, a way how to overcome the, this, this design to make it compatible with the SDK. So it, it seems that, you know, like kind of we are trying to repeat that work. Um, and like if in their testing, like the, the cache layer was really important for matching the performance. And essentially well, like the performance is still not matched because not all caching was implemented. That's well, I, I think the the difference in this testing that is being proposed now over to what was done before was the testing was with two different trees. So I, I think Bez is saying let's like let's keep the same tree, let's keep IVL, and let's remove all the all the abstractions within the SDK. But like, um, and it's keeping the current the current business logic. But I think like what um, the Vulcanized team did was they tested basically the storage layer with IVL against a brand new storage layer with SMT. And so the, the, the baseline, the baseline was IVL. Um, and we can use those benchmarks as like the baseline of IVL, but like there was no benchmark of IVL plus a minimal storage layer. And I think that's right. the, that's the difference in the test. Uh, correct. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that, um, they somehow like failed to like reduce the interface and like the conclusion of months of the work was really that uh all these layers i mean most of these layers have to, have to be included yeah well, I, I think go ahead no you go ahead no i, I was going to say like um i i think there's like various uh various layers to the design um like i, I think there was also just like a generalized like we we just even now like if we were to pull this experiment off, like, and let's say it's like less performant, like we don't have a great understanding of all all the different abstractions within the store package, and I think that's like what was missing within the store v two work. Like, the the abstractions weren't like greatly understood and like how they interacted with each other. But I think if we understand the fundamentals of like how they interact with each other, then we're able to better say why this is more performant or why this is less performant. I mean. So, this conversation is, is is proving exactly my point, right? Like Vulcanize is saying one thing, Peter's saying another, we have another idea, and we're all kind of running, you know, in blindly circles. in circles and like we're all saying somewhat different things and we have nothing to really show to indicate, you know, what's true and what's not, right? So So I said I really just like really, yeah. I said just really like now trying to bring uh, what's his name? Ian and the other guy. Oh, I forgot the name. Who was that? Roy. Most of them. Sorry. Roy. Yeah. Uh, yes. I mean, Aaron was there as well, uh, and me. And we, at the beginning, we really set the goals, like try to like reduce on the interfaces, like rework these interfaces to to remove what's possible. And uh, Bez, yes, I, I shared your. Uh, uh, I mean, your, your concerns, yes, that, yes, it's bloated. Uh, and that was really a, like a, a goal of this of this implementation to um, to try to rework it. Uh, but the conclusion was that it, it, it somehow was needed. Somehow was needed. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, yeah. It, I would love to know, like, I, mean, I, was, I think, yeah. like, we, we can talk to Ian and Roy. Um, mm -hmm. they, I don't know, I, th I thought I saw Michael on here earlier. Yeah, here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so like they, there's still contacts we can, we can, we can tap on. And I did talk to Ian and, um, him and the Vulcanist crew are still interested in like contributing to the SDK. So, um, I, I wouldn't say we're like entirely running in circles or entirely running blind. Um, we should definitely tap on the shoulders of the people who, um, did a lot of this research and kind of get the learnings from them. Um, yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you no, know, Ron really spent a lot of time on it, and we were mm. going back and forth, like, question, okay, are we sure we need to add this interface? It was like really like meeting after meeting, they were adding the interface. It was a year ago, last summer, yeah. I remember. And I but, sorry, don't man. fully remember, like, you know, what was like the the case specifically for adding like every particular interface but it, it really feels that you know like in this discussion that we are trying to circle back and and we do so i I, suggest I, I i do agree i do agree it does feel like we're we're kind of like going in somewhat of a circle but i think it's like 
I mean, when, when Roy and Ian were like suggesting adding this interface, like, was it understood what this interface did in store V1 or was it just kind of like, oh, like we see this is providing performance. Let's add it to this new layer. So I think like, if I remember correctly, yes, that was really related to this multi-store multi -store design that, you know, you have to register the trees, you have to like remember what you do register and all the caching layers uh, basically are coming from this like a rollback that, you know, that you can fail on different pay on different, um, different places. Like we have this panics in random places. So, uh, uh, like more or less, this is the, that, that was like the motivation. If I remember correctly, maybe Aaron, you, you remember more. Yeah, I mean, it would be good to sync up with them and, and, you know, make sure we're kind of coordinating work and not just, you know, um, repeating things. Yeah, and get up learning because I mean, I was talking with Ian at the Cosmoverse. He's like definitely, you know, uh, like open for, I mean, he's not cutting from, <laughs> uh, uh, from the rest of us, <laughs> like as, you know, let's say the vulcanized thing. Yeah, I, so, yeah, I don't want to keep. Yeah. Sorry, God. Uh, I just want to keep everyone. Sure. Um, we're we're ten minutes past. I just want to make sure that uh, everyone's aware, so they're not tagging along to to the extra conversation. Mm -hmm. You you can go ahead. Uh, no, I was gonna just reiterate that you know I think it's important to get a baseline for where we are today uh, to understand uh, what proposals we can make and what you know you know, what directions that we can take. So I think that's a good jumping off point. And, you know, that discussion that's open, uh, you know, we can post results there and, you know, start to make you know, suggestions for how to actually proceed. Uh, yeah, that's it. 